Gadget and the Gadgetinis is a linear 3D platformer based on the same titled sequel series to Inspector Gadget. The game tasks you with conquering four simple stages to, predictably, foil the evil claw's plans. The crux of the gameplay is utilizing Gadget's various go-go gadgets to overcome platforming obstacles, and it's unfortunately easy to do this sort of thing in a really shallow way. See Break Into Rules or some modern LEGO games for examples, wherein the powers are basically just keys to doors. Thankfully, Gadget and the Gadgetinis is not shallow, and its levels are built around exploring each of its mechanics and their potential for challenging platforming gauntlets. The ability to stand high on Gadget's extendo legs to avoid damage may seem trivial at first, but it comes with its own limitations and nuances. You can't move while using the extendo legs, but other things can move underneath you, allowing for some pretty slick hazard evasion as you switch rapidly between the standing and stretched states. Or the Gadget Copter, which has a very particular wind-up and very particular distance it can travel. It feels rather mechanical and stilted, but this ends up being used to its benefit when you have to meticulously time its usage around moving environmental hazards or coupling it with your glide ability in the late game. In short, this isn't lazy work. The game genuinely cares about its various mechanics and their utilities. There were even a couple places I felt genuinely challenged, and I was not expecting that. It's not as though the proceedings are problem-free, however. The game asks you to overcome the same hurdles in the same fashion just one too many times, for my taste anyway. I understand you don't want your game to clock in at under three hours, but it already feels more than complete as it is. There's no need to push it. The mass of collectibles are also rather useless, which is a huge shame, in part because they're so ubiquitous. They're just saturating the whole landscape, littered everywhere. If you nab enough of them, you unlock new passive powers like a bubblegum gun, or stronger punches, or a self-repairing module. These are barely noticeable during gameplay, especially because they're all combat-focused and the game's combat only gives you two simplistic enemy types to tackle. But on balance, Gadget and the Gadgetinis is pretty good. It explores its mechanics dutifully, it offers varied locales with their own distinctive design elements, it looks pleasant, and there's nothing really wrong with it outside a couple nitpicks.